Uh, my name is Dan Brown, and I'm going to be hosting this hour-long session. We're going to be talking about, really, the new Dynamics AX, and in particular, how we invested in it, why, what were some of the motivations? You know, I've seen a lot about AX7 over the past couple of days, about the new user experience, about the client, and so on, some of the business process pieces. But we really want to drill down here, give you some new demos, some things that you haven't seen. We're going to spend some time with one of our uh, customers who has worked with us very closely over the years. Uh, I think that's going to be a really nice conversation to have. Um, but we're going to start off with motivation. I mean, what is this, empowering your people? What is that all about? It's funny, you know, if, you, if you're a bit of a historian in business, and you go back 100 years, Theory X was kind of the way that you did things. It was all about control. It was all about optimizing the way people did, particularly in the manufacturing industry. And there's some really good things that came out of that. But one thing that was really clear is it didn't really motivate people. And so since that time, you had things like Theory Y and other models of organizational behavior. Uh, and in fact, if you go online and you look for a guy named Fred Herzberg, you'll find he is one of the most referenced Harvard Business Review authors, and he talks a lot about this in one of his articles, which I'll quote in a second. He said, hey, look, you can motivate people in a couple of ways. One way which he called the kita, the kick in the ass. Excuse me, I know, is that French or something? I'm not sure, I forget, anyways. The kita is a way of motivating people. It's a carrot or a stick. And typically what we do is we provide people with uh, incentives, benefits, perks, nice environment, free Coca-Cola and such. But in fact, those don't actually end up motivating people. It's in fact, their absence demotivates. So what does motivate people? Well, he called those motivators. And he said, and actually, why don't I just quote him here? He said, hey, you know, the motivator factors, these things that are intrinsic to the job, and that word intrinsic is very important, they have to do with things like achievement. I want to get stuff done. I mean, I'm sure you all feel that way when you go to work, you want to get stuff done. You want to be recognized for it. The work itself, it's got to be interesting. You want responsibility. Control is a very important human need. Obviously, that goes somewhat contrary to the Theory X model. You want to be able to grow. You want to be able to do more each and every day. You want to get better. And check out this paper. It's a really great paper. It's actually from the late 80s. I think it's very, very relevant today, and it remains one of the all-time HBR models. So empowering people, empowering people gets them engaged, helps your company. How do you empower people? And why are we focusing on smarter decisions? Business solutions are here to help you complete business processes. Now, the easy business processes, let's say you take something like an expense report. You got some credit card transactions, they auto load into an expense report, and let's say your company has a threshold of 75 euro. If it's below that, auto approve it, repay, pay the credit card, pay the employee, and so on. That is an automated business process. It's easy to do. It's a happy path. What is not easy to do is when there is an exception, or where there are alternatives. And that's because people need to decide. You need to make a decision. You can get machine learning to help you out, but you need to have people decide. And that's what great business solutions do. They're going to help your people decide better in cases where there is an exception or where, the, where they have alternatives. And so our, our thesis with the new Dynamics AX is that there are three different elements to that. And I'm going to spend a little bit of time in each one of those, and then we're going to demo a lot. We're going to drill down into an area of, uh, of, of retail in particular, and then we're going to talk about this with a customer who's actually used the product. So the first is turning data into actions. We've got a lot of data, but we have to convert it into actions or it's meaningless. We're going to reinvent business process because there are a lot of business processes in AX. Not all of them are used all the time. Not all of them are used effectively. We need, to perf we need to make that better. And of course, business insight. Business insight, I think, is somewhat misunderstood. What do I mean by that? I mean that business insight helps you 
understand your business and get instincts about your business. When your people understand how your business runs and they have insight, they make better decisions, they make faster decisions, and they feel pretty good about that. So those are kind of the three elements. We'll do a little bit of slideware to kind of set up some demos, and then we'll go full forward on the demos themselves. A modern user experience. It's kind of a, a little bit of a platitude these days, I think, but the IDC did a, a, uh, a report, and they said, hey, if you take some best practices for usability, many of which, by the way, have come from the consumer world, and you incorporate those into a business solution, you can see cost reductions of up to 80% on those business processes. 80%. That is bottom line. That translates into the bottom line, a reduction in cost. So usability is very, very important. You want people to be able to use the product, get up to speed very quickly. The right client for each role. Not everybody in an organization does the same thing. We need to have different clients for them to interact with. If I'm on the shop floor, I might use a tablet. I might use a handheld. If I'm sitting in the office, I may need high transactional throughput. I want a keyboard. I want a mouse. So we'll talk about that. If I'm sitting in a retail environment and I want to be in front of the cash registers, out with my customers, I want an interactive tablet that looks really great, makes the customer feel involved and integrated. And it's got to be optimized for productivity. Productivity is obviously the most important thing, getting stuff done quickly. <clears throat> Reinventing business process. That's, that's, a, that's a, a lofty statement, but it, to me it comes down to three things. Watch carefully on the new Dynamics AX, and what you'll see is when we show the product, it's actually a lot of products in one. Um, it's a dashboard of smaller applications that are somewhat self-contained. And each one of those applications is a workspace. They, of course, all work together because it's an integrated suite. But each one of those applications, these persona-based workspaces, are designed around what people do on a regular basis in a particular role. If I'm a controller, I may want to interact with the general journal. I want to look at what things that I've posted, what batches I have, what things haven't been posted, and so on. If I'm on the shop floor, I want something entirely differently. Entirely different. The other thing is some of these workspaces are actually team-based. You've probably seen the period enclosed workspace. We demo that a lot. That's team-based. Lots of people interacting need to see the same informa information uh, uh, with that, uh, uh, together. And of course, business process has to be for, your, for you, for your business, global. Most of you run global businesses, have multiple legal entities. Obviously, you have need for horizontal business processes, and you have need for industry and vertical business processes, and you want to bring those together. In fact, this, this point is so important that I wanted to spend a little bit more time on this. AX, I think, is unique in its ability to bring a range of business processes together in a consistent look and feel, in a consistent set of workspaces for a consistent set of users, end to end. And then, of course, in order to reinvent productivity, you need to be able to integrate and you need to be able to extend and configure to tune to the things that you want. We'll talk a little bit about that from an example of, of personalization. How do you tune a business process to your company or your individual needs? And then, of course, you have to have a great ecosystem. I can't say enough about this. Horizontal, industry, vertical, micro-vertical. If you claim that you're reinventing business process, you must have third-party solutions that fit, that fit these niches that fit these global needs. And on this version of AX, we've done uh, the best job, I think, to date. And uh, for partners that are in the room, thank you very much for contributing to the solutions and helping us make this a, a, a great release. OK, so the last element of this is business insight. And I kind of talked about this as developing the instincts um, a great example is a customer who's a fashion customer that I worked with out of Denmark. 
They started to get their designers to see downstream KPIs of cost and profit and loss in the de design phase, to see what they had designed before and how it impacted profit and loss. They had never done that before. When they got those instinct, it fundamentally changed the way they designed the fashion, the way the, the materials they picked. And so getting that integrated experience so that you can take these instincts and change the way you're doing things is absolutely critical. And you can see here a workspace we'll talk about. Well, in fact, I'll show you this workspace in a second. Uh, actionable, obviously, that, that is critical. You gotta be able to use the data. And then finally, we're very proud to be using the best of Microsoft technology. Uh, you know, we obviously work with teams like the Power BI team, and we'll show you some really interesting stuff that we've done um, as well as what some others have done. So let me go ahead and show you the product. Now, how many people have actually seen AX, the new AX, already? Okay, good. <clears throat> so my plan is, I know what other people have demoed. By the way, they stole all my demos. So I have to do some new demos. I hope that's okay with you. This is, uh, this is actually a, a recent build it's not a part of our technology preview, but I wanted to show you something kind of cool here. The things that you notice, just from a, from a sort of standard client perspective, obviously it's a browser-based client. I've got this look and feel that is very similar to Office 365. I can change the company in the top right-hand corner if I want to do that, if I have multiple legal entities. I've got alerts. I can personalize this if I want. I can change the color and so on and so forth. I can go ahead and interact with the help system, which is designed new for uh, Dynamics AX with this version of the product. A whole new wiki, a set of task guides. You may have seen task guides before, et cetera. Um, one of the things I like is the, the, the ability to dive deep into the product by typing something into the metadata search bar so it knows all of the forms inside the product. So I'm gonna go into uh, customers. I see a list of customers. I can, you know, this is the typical fact box. So if I want to see primary address and I go ahead and scroll through, you see this data is updating on the right hand side. If I want to drill in and see more information, I can go right there, trying to really get you to your data very quickly. One of the things that we just added is if I don't really need to have this uh, DUNS number associated with, a, with a, a customer, I can just hide it right here. And I'm done. Uh, that's, you know, these are the, these little things help you tune the client so that it does things the way that you want. If I want to order tabs, if I want to add columns, I can do that with a click of a button. Uh, I can use a detailed view and scroll through that way, which is a very nice uh, way of, of, of interacting with the client. Uh, and then another thing is, of course, you know, a lot of people really like uh, Dyna linking. So DynaLinking will allow me to go get this customer's transactions. Now that now I'm kind of, I have this quandary, I've got this customer's transactions, but I actually don't have the master data next to me. And that's a little bit of a pain. In, in AX 2012, what would you do? You'd pop up two screens and you'd be able to look at them at the same time. So we did that too. I think this was really just a super, super clever thing that the client team did for us. Now I'm, I'm running these side by side. That's pretty cool, but it is also very, very cool that you see they are linked through eventing so that the information as I go through the customer on the left-hand side is updated on the right-hand side. So that's a fairly elegant way. And if you're used to running multiple screens in your environment, most browser-based models just really aren't designed for that. So we're pulling some of the great rich client experience directly into the browser. So I think that is very, very cool. Okay, let us get out of this. We'll go back. Now, workspaces. I'm gonna show you a workspace that you haven't seen before, at least I don't think you've seen before. Um, we have taken a lot of the existing logic inside the product and added it. Oh, hey, this just goes to show you that this is an early drop of the product when you see that kind of thing. I think it was because I was so proud of these demos that the demo gods kind of uh, you know, got on me, but whatever, that's okay. So what you see here is if I'm in HR and I'm managing compensation models, 
um, I see this at a glance. So I have, you know, we have this motif of these tiles on the left-hand side. They give you that data, that quick visual of data. Hey, how many fixed compensation plans do I have? How many employee events need review and so on? Sitting here on the left-hand side, if I don't want this, I can go ahead and personalize this. I can hide this as well. I may have to, let's see if I get a refresh. I may have to refresh this just for the sake of, uh, of an early drop. So I've got this personalization. I can do that very quickly. I can revert it if I want. Now what you see here is most companies have fixed plans and they have variable plans. I can see those with a click of a button. Um, and one of the nice things about this is historically if you were trying to get connected data, it was very difficult to do. So if I wanted to go into this management bonus and I wanted to see who had a plan set up, I get this information very quickly. Uh, another thing that you'll notice here is that I'm having a refresh problem. We'll come back to that in a second. One of the things you'll notice is I can check out the levels in the plan very, very quickly directly from the dashboard. Okay, we'll try this. We may have to go to a, a second. Okay, let's go back in here. So if you'll notice some of the plans in the center, I can actually see the compensation structure with a click of the button. Now the point here is, what are we trying to do? The intent is to identify those tasks that an HR person, an HR manager does very quickly, uh, sorry, does very frequently, and to make them very quick. And this is an example. I want to see what the structure of these plans are. I want to see who is on those plans. And then you see some, a, a BI here. Can't drag and drop that. And what this BI is showing you is it's showing you typically uh, HR from a, from a compensation standpoint, you're looking at midpoints. You want to see what midpoints and the, and the range of your midpoints are from a compensation scheme. So we show you that directly in the user experience. So uh, a pretty nice uh, look and feel there. I'm going to switch over to a, 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 different, um, a different workspace. Now I had mentioned a couple of things previously. I said, hey, look, if you're a controller, um, you probably want to operate primarily within fi with financial information. And in fact, you may not even want to use a web-based browser. You probably want to use Excel. So why don't we take a look at general journal processing. <clears throat> Thank you for that. So what you see here is, again, that's that same motif. I've got tiles on the left-hand side. Those are going to show me information very quickly. In the center of the screen, you're going to see places where I take action. So for example, I have a number of journal batches. These are my vouchers, my debits, and my credits. I might be doing this as a part of a, a period close or an adjustment transaction. I'll give you an example of, of, of uh, uh, posting a, a simple expense. But I can go right in here, and if I want, I can post uh, directly from within the user experience. It shows that I have two vouchers that have posted. Um, and I can also obviously go ahead and create a voucher very simply. Um, this is something that you know you would do. This is typical AX. You've seen this before. If I want to go in here and create a voucher, um, I can do that. I can add these lines very quickly. But you'll notice I, I may want to open up in Excel. Now, when I open up in Excel, let me explain to you what's happening here. Let me just get this up and running for a second. We know that there are a couple of scenarios where people love to use Excel. So what you're, what you're seeing here is on the, the bottom right-hand side, you see it's verifying and, and, and getting some information. It's pulling metadata from AX through uh, OData endpoints. Uh, and then it's also pulling, uh, it's actually pulling some master data over um, using data entities that we've created from, from an integration standpoint. And then once that's pulled in, uh, I can add whatever journal vouchers I want, it'll be validated, and then it'll go back into the system. And it's a very nice model. In fact, you know, it's, well, here we go. Why don't we just uh, add something here? So if I want to add, uh, let's see, I think my account for this office expense here is this. So let's say I bought $500 worth of office expenses, and uh, we'll do that. It's, it is the second, right? And I want to do, I think this is, 110, and we'll go here, my offsetting, okay, so I go ahead and I'll publish that, and there we go, we were successful. If I go into this uh, general journal now, 
I should be able to see those transactions and those are those transactions. And obviously it's a very simple example, but people who are operating primarily in Excel want to have the flexibility of Excel, but they also want to have the control that the ERP system would provide. Yes, let's save. Okay. Now, I had mentioned the ability to handle exceptional conditions. You have probably seen the sales order processing and inquiry workspace. Uh, sales order processing could be a fairly difficult job. This is the heartline of, of almost every business. How are you getting your customers? How are you converting sales? When there's a problem, how do you get rid of the problem? And so if you look in the center of the screen here, you're going to see those exceptional conditions. What happens if I have a delivery date problem? Let me just get the sales orders for the entire uh, company. What happens if I don't have a, a confirmation? Maybe there's something that is on hold. Maybe I can't hit the date to promise that the customer wants. Maybe the customer hasn't finalized um, the, the, the sales order. What happens if I have delays? Now, this is always a problem. If I have a delay and I made a promise to a customer, I may want to expedite, I may want to do a partial shipment, and so on. In fact, let's take a look at that. One of the things that I love about what we've done um, with AX uh, here is, you know, for example, I'm able to get information very quickly just by hover over, hovering over. Um, but then I can go directly into uh, the delivery alternative workbench and really start attacking that problem. So when I come in here, I'll see, for example, that, hey, I was supposed to get this on the 30th to our customer. That was the, the calculated date. And I can see that the warehouse that I was originally using, I got a big problem here because I have a back order. So how can I handle this? Well, I have a number, number of options. I can change the warehouse, which it showed as we went into the, 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 the workspace uh, bench. Um, I can look at partial shipments, for example. That'll give me multiple alternatives. I see here that I have, from warehouse two, I have 35 items in stock, so I can fulfill part of the order. I can look at variants. And as I promise, you see this promise date will actually change. If I want to look at different modes of uh, delivery to expedite, I can change those and it will calculate what my new uh, date of delivery to the customer is. And again, that's what we mean by, you know, Putting, putting this, this, these tools in your people's fingertips so they can make smart decisions quickly, and it's an example of handling an exceptional process, and this goes directly to your bottom line. If you can close more sales orders by handling these problems, your business is doing better. Okay. This is one of my favorite workspaces. Um, it is a heavy data and data intensive workspace. And if you're a manufacturer, um, you know cost administration is critical to your profitability. So anytime you're seeing production that has variance, you want to know about it. And if you're a controller, you definitely want this workspace at your fingertips. One of the things that this workspace allows you to do, I, you know, I won't go too much in here. This obviously talks about exceptional conditions like active costs that aren't uh, uh, correct or variance in production orders. Um, but you look on the right-hand side and you'll see I have now uh, business intelligence that is sitting directly in the workspace. And in fact, these are, these are Power BI tiles that I can choose from and add um, from my corporate content packs. And I can, I can take them away if, I don't, if this map of, of uh, the US uh, isn't super relevant for me. I can just take that out and I can, I can personalize that very easily. And then if I need to drill down, I can do that as well. So if I have a, a production order that is, has a high level of variance, I can drill down and go specifically into that production order. If I want to see the reasons why there are production order variances, I can do cost comparisons. I can look at what the contributions are. If it was a direct materials, which I can see here directly from the realized cost, I can go in and go figure out what the problem was and get it corrected if I need to. Okay. Now, a similar thing is one of the big problems that you see, and it, it, it's funny, it really shouldn't be a problem, but you want to, in a, in a cost model, you want to see, you see three columns here. On the left-hand side, you have inflows and outflows of inventory. In the middle column, you have inflows and outflows of work in progress. And on the right-hand side, you have the comparison between 
what is on your balance sheet in your general ledger and what is sitting in your sub ledger. Now, typically, the variance would not happen here, um, but there are occasions where somebody can post to the general ledger and get your sub ledger out of whack, and that is a very, very painful thing to go correct. You see it every day in this workspace. As soon as that variance happens, you can go in and run a variance report and correct it immediately. And that, these are the kind of things that when we build these workspaces, we go out and we watch what people do. And sometimes it's, it's sort of painful for us because we realize it's very painful to use certain things, certain business processes in our product, and we want to reinvent that and make it easy. This is a great example of that, where pain was happening with this variance control, and now it's very, very simple. It can happen automatically. Okay. Um, I talked about the right client for the right for the for, for each role for each different role and we've kind of seen that a little bit and we'll we're going to drill down a little bit into to retail in a second um, but one of the ones that I think is if you were if you're on a, a shop floor for example uh, and let's see if I can get this you know you're going to interact with the user experience through a touch screen typically um, let me just go ahead and log on. This is our, my very secure, uh, that would be a swipe typically. And you see here in the job card uh, on this, this device, this would typically be a, a tablet. Um, all of these, the interaction here would be touch-based. So if I want to start a job, I can go ahead and do that um, directly from within the user experience. If I want to see what other jobs are available, I can scroll through that by using the, the, the touch screen. Um, if I want to take a break, I can log that time uh, directly within the user experience. And so this is an example of where things are really designed specifically for the individual. Uh, I thought I'd give you another example of that as well. Actually, I have two more examples. I can't wear it. Let's see where I hid this. Ah. So we talked about business insight. If you're a CFO or you work with your CFO, you know your CFO probably isn't sitting in and doing you know, journal vouchers and transactions, uh, individual transactions. He or she is likely to be looking at things like you know, forecast and actual DuPont ratios, cash flow forecast, and so on, the kind of KPIs that you see up here. This is a financial dashboard and subsequent reports. If I want to drill in and see more details on the expense, I can do that directly and filter down. You see at the bottom, there are a number of different reports associated with this dashboard. And this is also a workspace. This is where we would expect somebody in a C-suite, specifically the CFO, would spend a lot of her or his or her time using data that's coming directly from AX, and in fact, data that could actually be pulled from multiple sources. And of course, since it's a content pack from, uh, from Power BI, it's got to have nat natural language query ability. So if I wanted to take a look at the quick ratio, I can just type that in, and I get that if I want to look at that and the current ratio, if I can spell here. I get that as well, and I can drill in even further. I can do this by company and so on. So it's a very nice model, I think, and very usable. It takes about 10 seconds to understand how you interact with that, and that productivity is an immediate, uh, 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 immediate uh, benefit to your company. Okay, well, I'm just about done, but I, I couldn't resist showing you the latest now, you're going to have to really squint here, I think. Let me see if I can get this. OK. So this is a Windows 10 phone. And if you're, see, you should really come closer. But this is a Windows 10 phone. Now, I, I, the idea here really is we will render our client on multiple form factors. And we'll show an example of that already. This is a fairly elegant employee self-service portal that is rendering on my phone. I don't expect you to see this. But it is pretty cool when I can take this to a continuum modem, plug it in, and if all goes well, which it did, I can start using this like a primary computer, and I can log in to my employee self-service portal. And if uh, I can play around with this just as if it was a real computer, and that's 
my Continuum Windows 10 phone, and that's pretty cool. All right, so I hope you like that. That's, I was really excited to show that. Kind of, I mean, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> Thank you. All right, let's get back to our machine here. And I'm on five. The fives have it. And we need to do that. Okay, so there is our demo. Um, we want to spend more time now on looking at retail and show you a deeper dive into industry. So it's my pleasure to invite up Ashton Matthew, who is the GM of AX Retail and Commerce. What's up, man? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The clicker is right there. Okay. Thank you, Dan. Uh, Dan talked a lot about how we are looking at improving productivity by using the right kind of user interface, and that's probably what I'll be covering as a part of uh, what we call commerce essentials. So how do you take a solution as broad and deep as uh, Dynamics AX, and how do you make it customized for a industry, and more importantly, how do you customize the user experience for the right type of roles in that industry? So I'll walk you through some of the work we are doing around the modern store and the mobile commerce client so that you're able to see how we optimize beyond just the browser into tablet form factors with a very fluid interface uh, that you might, as a, a retailer, actually be proud to show uh, to a customer that is actually used as a, fo a form of clienteling. Uh, and I'll also kind of touch a little bit upon how uh, we help you manage, for example, the various channels in an omni-channel um, um, uh, omni environment, and how do we improve the productivity of the, both the users in the back office as well as the users in the front of the store, and then give uh, both the users in the back office as well as the front of the store the insights that they need in order to do jo their job well. With that, let me quickly switch to the demo and show you some of that. Reconnect. Looks like I've timed out. Uh, well, it comes up, actually, let me quickly go to the modern pause. One of the big uh, improvements we have done across the years has been optimizing the user experience, especially in the store. So one of the big areas of improvement has been this notion of a modern pause that is basically a fluid canvas on which you can have a number of the tasks that you would do in an environment, in this case, the store. And as you can see, this is a canvas that has actually all the various elements of what you might want to do in the store. Everything from the normal po point of sale, as you would have normally seen in most uh, stores, the notion of a clienteling pause, which actually allows you to take products, uh, you know, walk customers through the various options of the product. But more importantly, also, the other kind of uh, tasks that you might, be, uh, uh, you might want to do in a store, everything from inventory management to shift to draw management um, and, you know, other kind of operations that you might want to do in the, uh, on the device. But more importantly, all of this is drag and drop enabled. So as a, as a back-end user, uh, who is configuring a point of sale, you can actually drag and drop these various elements and actually build these different canvases based on the role that you're trying to satisfy. Let me walk into products and kind of show you how uh, rich uh, the interaction is. The ability, for example, to do thing, what we call clienteling. Uh, the ability to compare items while you're talking to a customer. The ability to add to that sale automatically as a part of that transaction is all part of this uh, user interface. Uh, so w what you're seeing here is that kind of rich interaction that has a number of UI elements that make you more productive in that environment. The notion of a mini screen, so you're not popping back and forth between having the conversation with the customer to a pause view. But if you chose to move to a pause view, you can then go in and then, of course, complete the transaction. And then we have very 
um, uh, you know, enabled things like touch-enabled uh, tenders. You can either decide to take cash, you can, um, and so on and so forth um, uh, as a part of the tendering process. And then, of course, uh, if you wanted to send an email, you can send an email uh, to the customer. Uh, let me go into AX and kind of show you a little bit of the back-end operations that we do. We, we have, uh, as a part of uh, retail and commerce, have workspaces too. Everything uh, from you know, managing the catalog to categories uh, to price management. Let me walk you through a few of these uh, workspaces. For example, the category and uh, product management. If you are a retailer, you're dealing with uh, uh, items in a catalog, the ability for you to be able to not only manage items in the catalog, but more importantly, as uh, Dan pro uh, uh, pointed out, bring in insights that are relevant uh, to, your, uh, uh, to, to your decisions that you would make as a part of that catalog management. I, over here, for example, sales by category um, uh, for, that, um, uh, for that environment. Let me go back and show you a few more of these uh, workspaces. Uh, the other workspace I'd probably like to show you is, for example, uh, the work we have done around uh, 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 retail IT, the ability for you to monitor the jobs as you uh, uh, process transactions uh, in, in the store and bring it back or push in assortments from the back of the, um, um, uh, from the HQ to the store. And then, of course, the ability to deploy, deploy the stores effectively. You know, we've again brought in very relevant pieces of information uh, right on your fingertips when you are looking at doing a certain, um, uh, a certain job in, in your organization. For example, if you were in uh, channel deployment, the ability to see if a store was ready to deploy. Uh, let me go and show you some more of, for example, what you would do in a store. If you were in a retail store environment, you might even have a dashboard as a store manager to be able to monitor how your store is doing. You know, everything from you know, your devices, your registers, to your employees. But more importantly, as we've been pointing out, the ability to have very rich BI uh, with respect to that relevant role. In this case, a store manager figuring out how you know, how their store is doing, the ability to, uh, you know, look at your various, um, uh, you know, regions, be able to figure out uh, uh, the BI relevant to that uh, role. And as you can see, in a very rich, interactive way that allows you to look at uh, your operations. Let me switch to actually the web view of the POS. For example, we had, uh, had I had uh, shown you the application, this was a tablet application uh, that is a full app that can run in an offline mode, but we have created the same user experience on a browser. So if you went to the browser, you would have exactly the same user experience tailored, but now you're accessing the same point of sale functionality in a browser. So now you can interact with the POS both with a modern application, let's say on a tablet, but more importantly, if you had a much lesser capable tablet, like a cheap $100 or a 100 euro tablet, you could actually run the POS, the exact same POS on a browser, and therefore be able to have a lot more of these devices in a store, again, with the same optimized interface. Nothing changes, but you're running it uh, in the browser. Actually, let me uh, start a transaction um, in uh, you know, to show you that it's exactly the same thing, like start exactly the same uh, transaction that I had done before. Let me actually just quickly add an item from the catalog. Um, let me add. And go into an item so you can see we have rich uh, elements with respect. I can add uh, to the sale right now. And I'll walk through the variance and add to the transaction. I can also interact with the point of sale by using the touchpad. So I can add in an item uh, that, let's say, I know the barcode or I have a scanner that I can add. And as you can see, as a part of that interaction, we actually look at the item and actually allow you to do things like cross-sell. In this case, that it's detected that yeah, I can sell batteries, but whoever buys a battery uh, you know, with uh, the device, so, but I'll add warranty to it. So you can see very rich interaction with the device. But let, let me also show you how we have uh, created productivity. This, as you can see, it's Ale Alexander here, the store manager who is actually doing the transaction. But Alexander decides that he, he's too busy. He really wants to have another uh, 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 
one of his store associates take care of the transaction. So now I've suspended the transaction. And let me pop over to a different device. As you can see, this is now an iPad. And it has exactly the same user interface as the cloud pause that I was running in a browser, but also the same interface as a tablet that was running Windows. And now I'm going to go in here and actually go to transactions. And I, as you can see, I can recall a transaction. And as you can see, I'm able to move from the cloud. That transaction actually happened on a web browser. And now I can go in and actually recall that same transaction. The interaction between devices is seamless, both from a user experience, but more importantly, from a productivity perspective across multiple devices. So you can actually have transactions that you may start on one device, transfer to another device, and of course, let me just tender out this uh, device. So rich interactions, completely optimized uh, for, uh, for uh, uh, both interactions within an environment, such as a store, or as Dan pointed out, uh, you know, both within uh, the shop floor and other kind of environments. But again, that rich, interactive, um, uh, kind of mode. I can show you, for example, this is now in a portrait mode. You would normally use a tablet, and you can see it has immediately reconfigured itself uh, to that mode. Um, you know, so this again, this interaction between devices and surfaces is an important part of what we see that journey of a modern business user with high productivity. Um, and with that, let me hand it over to Dan. Uh, Thank you, Ashwin. That was Thank fantastic. Thank you. Fabulous. Thank you. Wonderful. OK, so we had a number of demos there. And we hope that you, we illustrated how it is we're empowering your people. Ah, wait a minute. Too fast. How it is we're empowering your people with solutions in Dynamics AX, the new Dynamics AX, with data with reinvented business process and reimagining business insight. Now, don't take our word for it. We'd love uh, to share with you some commentary that we've had. This is a, a, a customer of ours we're very proud of. And I, I, I realize this is not typically, you're not supposed to do this, but I'm going to read it anyways. The beauty of Dynamics AX is it will help you make better informed decisions faster and ultimately increase your business potential and take our business operations to the next level. I think that's just awesome. And that's what we want all of you to say about Dynamics AX. Actually, I'd love to have the, the customer come up here and, and talk, say these things in his own voice. And just to give you an idea of what they do every day, let's roll this video. My job was fun. <laughs> that just looks excellent. It's my great pleasure to introduce uh, Thomas Mayer, the COO from the Lotus F1 team. Please join me with an applause. Thank you. Hi, Dan. Hey, Thomas. How are you? Good. Thanks to be here. Shall we have a, uh, yep. a chat? Well, first of all, I, I, I just want to say thanks for joining us. Pleasure. And um, I'm also very thankful for the uh, relationship we've had working together over the last three years. It's been uh, very fruitful. It's mutual. Excellent. I'm glad to hear that. Maybe we could start by talking about empowering your people and how, when we've worked together with Dynamics and Microsoft, how that's worked out. In fact, uh, we were coming from a very old ERP system to a very modern AX uh, System. So, in fact, it, it was enabling us to do a business transformation in, in terms of, we're anyway in, in, the, in the business of reinventing ourselves to stay competitive. But what it really did, it helped us to do it faster and more efficient. Mm -hmm. And you were quoting me there, so that's one of my, my themes in the company. So, we need to become more efficient and more faster to make the right decision. And that is exactly what, in fact, AX was enabling us to do. Excellent. 
Well, it, it sounds like you guys go pretty fast. Uh, we go very fast. <laughs> you yeah. go very fast, that's right. Now, you, we've been working together on the new Dynamics AX, and you've been a part of the technical adopter program. Correct. And uh, how's that going so far? That goes very well. Obviously, uh, we work very close with you guys. Uh, we have, in fact, uh, a team of R&D specialists in Enstone at the factory working with us together. And uh, the feedback from our users was, was very good because, obviously, the, the modern user interface is something they are really looking forward because that's a natural way for them to work because they are used to this working at home in the yeah. private life. Mm -hmm. So they can really easily adapt, and uh, I'm really looking forward to see this going live in January. Excellent. We're looking forward to that, too. So is there, is there a favorite feature from the team or from you personally? I think the, the, the business analytics, the, to be able to customize, you know, to, you were speaking about what people motivate. So they want to be in control. They want to drag what they need to do their uh, job as good as they can. And so it's not me telling them they want to do this themselves so they can customize as they want. And I think that will really motivate it and give them the tool in hands to do a better job. Wonderful. Faster job. Excellent. Wonderful. Um, so now I, I, I know you, you collect a lot of data. You're very data. Correct. We are very data driven, yeah. Right. So from the product, but also from the business, yeah. Excellent. So maybe you can share with us how, how, how you've collected that data and how you've used that uh, to make smarter decisions in your company. Um, we are, in the past, we had hardly any data collected. Now we are collecting data from the beginning of the engineering in terms of how many engineering hours we spend on a part down to planning uh, the runs in the wind tunnel, and then obviously in the factory, but also at, at the track site, so we can now correlate our financial performance in terms of the costs we are spending to the, the gain we have on track. So this is a very, very powerful uh, tool for us now to make uh, a decision on how we spend the money. Our aim is always to spend the money most efficiently because we never have enough money in our industry. <laughs> right. Any chance we could take a look at some of your stuff? Yes, yeah, I, can, uh, I can show okay. you uh, something what we do on, on the Power BI side because we, we really look at, at data a lot. And so I'm going to show you one of my dashboards. Okay, we'll switch over. What are you you're on to? Is that right? Yes, I'm on to. Okay. So, yeah. So this is now my, my real dashboard I'm using uh, wherever I'm in the world. Obviously, we are traveling a lot, so I need to be able to connect very easily to, uh, to back to home, to headquarters. So I can do this through a, through a browser. This is Power BI in the browser. So you can see on the left side, I have my different um, dashboards. Uh, obviously, our employees are a key resource because they deliver the performance. We just enable them to do so which we track, and I do a lot of financials, of, but I show you some production. I would like to show you something which I have on this side, uh, which gives you a, a feel how we can slice and dice. So these are the works order I'm running currently through the, through the operation in Enstone, and you see I have them split into different views. So these are the different uh, operations I'm doing. They, they are acronyms, so you don't... And then I have the different parts of the car, which I have, and these are the, the resource pools. So if I go and say, look, show me what I do in terms of, of the chassis, so this will instantly adapt to what we are doing. And I can uh, then go and say, show, show me everything which I have in the machine shop. So it does the same. And then I have on this side uh, the years I can select, and there is one thing which is, which is really good and which I really like. So we started to work with Microsoft in 2012. But you can see I have 2010 and 11 as well there as in terms of data. So I can, in fact, grab my old data which I have produced in a, in, a, in a different system into this kind of views and combine these views. And this is a very, very powerful tool for me to make all of these comparisons. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, I, you know, I think it's a, it's a very impressive tool. I, can I play around with it or is it, no, would that be? You, you can play here on this part, but not on the financial uh, Not on the financial one. Okay, great. Um, so. Can I ask you one last question? For sure. Okay. So moving forward, obviously things change a lot for you. Yes, we change very, very often. Yes. What, 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 are, you, what are you thinking about? What are the challenges you're facing over the next two to five years? And what can we be doing to help you face those challenges? You're, in fact, already helping us doing so. As you said, we are producing a lot of data. Our big challenge at the moment is, and what, that's what we're, in fact, doing since here, is we are doing a lot in machine learning. Mm -hmm. 
we embarked into having a data lake in the cloud in Azure, mm -hmm. where we put all our you know, petabytes of data in there. We run all these different uh, analytics and, and algorithm over it to give us insights we never saw before, because now we are able to connect you know, technical data with external data, like weather data, because it has a very big influence in terms of performance on the track, yeah. and things we never really were aware of, and you know, these kind of tools really allow you to scale as you need. You know, if I need a lot of power, then I have a lot of power. If I do something small, then I only need something small. That's uh, where you will enable us to do much better and much faster. One, wonderful. Hey, Thomas, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And we look forward to you going live on the new Dynamics Air Yes, app. we too. Take thank care. Thank you very much. Thank Dan. you. I knew I should have been a race car driver. Okay. But I've actually raced through this presentation, apparently, because I am almost out of time. All right, so thanks to Thomas. I think that's a great story. Hopefully it resonates with you. Um, the, the other thing that I think has been really compelling about uh, AX, the new AX, is the way that we've seen the response both in press and analysts. Um, you can check out some of these at your leisure. There are a few that I think are, are worth uh, pointing out, particularly because they were done fairly intentionally. Um, you know, I think, I think you got to like it when IDC comes out and says, hey, this, this new Dynamics AX looks very impressive. You know, we, we spent a lot of time uh, conferring with analysts and showing them and giving them early versions of uh, or early previews of the product. And, you know, sometimes they're pretty hard. You know, they, they sort of tell it like it is. And they tell us when they do a bad job. And so when we see... Uh, you know, that we're doing something that uh, they appreciate and they think is in the right direction. We're very proud about that. I think the other one is, I believe it's right down here. Uh, I can't see it, but there's a comment up here that talks about bringing a consumerized user experience. And if you remember at the beginning of the talk, I talked about how cost can be reduced by better usability and particularly by taking cues from what people are doing in their consumerized world, particularly with their tablets and on browser-based applications. So I think in general, we've gotten a lot of very, very positive feedback. Um, we hope that your feedback will contribute to it as well. So let me wrap up with two last thoughts for you. Going back to the, the beginning of the presentation, the whole idea here was to empower your people. We talked about why that's important, engaging people. When people are engaged, they're, they're motivated, they're doing their work, they feel good about what it is, they have a sense of purpose, and that goes to the bottom line. And our thesis is, in order to empower your people, you have to give them great tools. You have to give them tools to handle decision points. You have to give them tools to handle exceptional conditions. And those tools, have to do with data surfaced through a user experience that they can then conduct actions on. They have to have business process showcased in the right way through things like workspaces. And of course, they have to have business insight. And that business insight has to help them evolve and develop an instinct about their business. You should have everybody in your organization understand what is driving the business and how they're contributing to that. That is engagement and that is empowering. I encourage you to go and uh, try the public preview. We have a public preview that's coming out in about two weeks. You'll be able to get that on customer source and partner source if you're an existing customer or partner. Obviously, you've been attending sessions. Check out the expo for more demos. There's lots and lots of stuff that we couldn't show you here today. Go on Connect. Follow us on, on Twitter and check out our website. And we hope that you have a great remainder of your convergence. And with that, thank you very much.